Look, I think compute is going to be the currency of the future. I think it will be maybe the most precious commodity in the world. And I think we should be investing heavily to make a lot more compute. Uh, compute is... It's an unusual... I think it's going to be an unusual market. Um, you know, people think about the market for, like, chips for mobile phones or something like that. And you can say that, okay, there's 8 billion people in the world. Maybe 7 billion of them have phones. Maybe there are 6 billion, let's say. They upgrade every two years. So the market per year is 3 billion system on chip for smartphones. And if you make 30 billion, you will not sell 10 times as many phones because most people have one phone. Um, but compute is different. Like intelligence is going to be more like energy or something like that, where the only thing that I think makes sense to talk about is at price X, the world will use this much compute, and at price Y, the world will use this much compute. Um, because if it's really cheap, I'll have it like reading my email all day, like giving me suggestions about what I maybe should think about or work on, and trying to cure cancer. And if it's really expensive, maybe I'll only use it, or will only use it to try to cure cancer. So I think the world is going to want a tremendous amount of compute. And there's a lot of parts of that that are hard. Uh, energy is the hardest part. Building data centers is also hard. The supply chain is hard. And then, of course, fabricating enough chips is hard. Um, but this seems to me where things are going. Like, we're going to want an amount of compute that's just hard to reason about right now. How do you solve the energy puzzle? Nuclear? That's what I believe. Fusion? That's what I believe. Nuclear fusion? Yeah. Who's going to solve that? I think Helion's doing the best work, but I'm happy there's like a race for fusion right now. Nuclear fission, I think, is also like quite amazing. And I hope as a world we can re-embrace that. It's really sad to me what how the history of that went and hope we get back to it in a meaningful way. So to you, part of the puzzle is nuclear fission, like nuclear reactors as we currently have them. And a lot of people are terrified because of Chernobyl and so on. Well, I think we should make new reactors. I, I, I think it's just like, it's a shame that industry kind of ground to a halt. And what, it, just mass hysteria is how you explain the halt. Yeah. I don't know if you know humans, but... That's one of the dangers. That's one of the security threats for for, for uh, nuclear fission is humans seem to be really afraid of it. And that's something we have to incorporate into the calculus of it. So we have to kind of win people over and to show how safe it is. I worry about that for AI. Like AI is going to have, I believe, tremendously more good consequences than bad ones, but it is going to have bad ones. And there will be some bad ones that are bad, but not theatrical. You know, like a lot more people have died of air pollution than nuclear reactors, for example. But we worry, most people worry more about living next to a nuclear reactor than a coal plant. But something about the way we're wired is that although there's many different kinds of risks we have to confront, the ones that make a good climax scene of a movie carry much more weight with us than the ones that are very bad over a long period of time, but on a slow burn. Well, that's why truth matters, and hopefully AI can help us see the truth of things, to have have balance, to understand what are the actual risks, what are the actual dangers of things in the world. 